Welcome to Learning Go Go, the podcast. Hey, hey, it is Thursday night. I am your host, Sydney A. I am also the author of Everything I Need to Know, I Learned in Gogo, How Preacher's Daughter Pole Danced Her Way to Finding Her True Self. And I hope you guys are excited for another Thursday night, getting together, just kind of, you know, like having a conversation. I never have anything planned for these. I always just see what you guys want to talk about. So I can't wait to see who is joining us tonight. Hey, how you doing tonight, Jesse? That's not Jesse, that's Kyler. I'm not with it yet, babe. I'm sorry. I'm like, wah. But thank you for hopping in. It is so good to see you. I am getting, uh, let's see here. Okay, I'm going to shut that so that we don't get those uh, dings and dongs going in. And also, it's funny. I was getting set up for this, and I felt like I was forgetting something. I'm like, okay microphone, headphones, laptop, mouse, you know, like sound buffer thing. I'm like, I got it. I forgot to throw all the comforters and everything around. So if I'm a little echoey tonight, I apologize. Um, Thank you. Kyler says it's all good. Been a long day today. Amen, brother. I've been trying to get up early. I'm on this mission. I suck at getting up early. Um, But my plan is I want to get up, I want to get some work done, I want to get some stuff done around the house because I do a workout, um, I do home workouts, but I have a virtual gym link where my friends and I meet, like in the friend that I've been working out with is in Texas, so she's two hours behind and we usually work out like 9.30 my time. So I want to get stuff done before I hop on the workout with her. So that was my plan is like, I get up six, six 30. Um, yesterday I got up, I had my list. I'm like, I'm going to get this done, this done, this done. And my puppy threw up all over my bed, all over the couch. So my list went out the window and I wound up cleaning up dog puke, um, instead. <laughs> and then this morning I had my whole plan, you know, I'm like, I'm going to do this, 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 and this. And I wound up having to pick up a family member from the ER. Um, so that took my, my list and threw it out the window. So one good thing to know about life is when you have a plan, the universe is going to go, <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> so, uh, don't, you know, always have a backup plan because odds are your plan is not going to happen the way that you are planning it out. Johnny's here. Hey, Johnny, thanks for hopping on. We have lots of exciting stuff going on too. So I'm so happy to see my friends hopping on here. You guys are awesome. Um, but yeah, I've been like, like you said, Kyler, a long day. Um, you know, good stuff though, for the most part, other than, you know, the year, well, even the year, cause she was okay. So, you know, I'm going to put that in the good news column because um, there was no, no harm, no foul there. <laughs> so that's a good thing. But I don't like when I have a plan in place and then it all just goes like completely off the rails because um, I like getting things accomplished. I like checking things off of the to-do list and it's really hard to do like spontaneous stuff for me. Like if somebody tells me we have a meeting at nine o'clock and it's like nine twenty, and they're still not there, like I get aggravated because I'm like, I blocked out this time for you. Why are you disrespecting my time? But other people can go with the flow. So which are you? Put it in the comments. Are you a like to have stuff planned out and expect people to be on time? Or do you kind of like figure time is relative and you kind of go with the flow? Because maybe that's a me problem. Maybe I just am like too rigid with with times. And I don't mean like five minutes, like shit happens. Or like if you're running late and you text, that's completely different. I just mean like, like, uh, you know, we're going to do this at two and then it's like three 30 and they're still not at your house and they haven't contacted you. Like that kind of stuff drives me nuts. And all right. So Johnny says, I get anxiety waiting. Same, same. I don't like that. Like I, I figure we had a plan. 
So I'm sticking to the plan. Well, like I said, you know, some things happen and some, <laughs> okay, he said, I get anxiety waiting and then he added, then angry. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Oh, <laughs> and it goes on, then paranoid. All right, so we get anxiety, then angry, then paranoid. If I don't hear from somebody and they're running really late, I start imagining like worst case scenarios. So then I start to get worried because I'm like, oh my God, what if they got in an accident? What if this happened, that happened? So and Kyler says, things need to be planned out. Don't like my time being wasted. Don't get angry, but I get very disappointed. Yes, yes. It depends on the situation. If it's somebody that's a habitual late person, I've learned to tell them that whatever's going on is happening earlier than it's actually happening because then when they finally show up, they'll be on time. But it, you know, like you shouldn't have to do that, especially as adults. Like you, I do the, the reverse engineer, like, okay, I need to be there at nine and it's going to take two hours to get there. So I can't, you know, I have to leave at seven, but actually I'm going to leave at 630 because I might run into traffic and that, you know, so that means I have to get in the shower at this time because I have to, you know, and I, I reverse engineer my day so that I don't leave people waiting if, if we have plans. I just, I think it's rude, but some people don't, some people just are like, what? And it's like, we had it. It's my time. But I think it's because I, I also like overstuff my life with things to do. So I have to have my times, you know, like at least somewhat on schedule or then other things don't get done. So I think that's part of it too, you know, aside from just being rude, but uh, yeah. So you guys are making me feel better that it's not just me <laughs> that likes people to be on time. It was funny because before I started the, the podcast today, it was about 15 minutes before the uh, internet went out in my house. And that like caused anxiety and anger because I have to reboot it almost every day. And that's just stupid. So I went through, you know, like I can practically do the app with my eyes closed now, because like I said, this is almost a daily occurrence and we, we only use streaming services for TV. You know, we, we have the internet for all of our devices. So when it goes out, it affects like pretty much you know, a majority of things in the house that have screens attached. And I didn't want to be late for our podcast date today. So I go through the, the app, do all the things, and it didn't work. It didn't bring my internet back. So now I'm like freaking out because now it's like 10 minutes to go before the show. And it finally worked. And I was like, Phew. so that's probably why. Um, when I started this, I apologize. I probably sound echoey tonight because I'm setting up the room and I thought I had it all set, but I have a bunch of comforters and like an Elmo doll and stuff like that, that I throw around to absorb some of the sound. And I didn't do that tonight. So I apologize if I'm a little echoey. Um, hopefully it doesn't sound too bad to you guys. Tina Michelle. Hey, sweetie. Good to see you too. Thank you for hopping on here. Yay. Awesome. I hope you are having a Thursday night. Does anybody else feel like this week flew? Like, I feel like we just did the Thursday night podcast and we're back. And that's awesome because I missed you guys, but it really does not feel like a week has gone by. That went by really fast. Um, so I hope that your week has been good. If something incredible has happened, please put it in the comments. If there's something you guys want to talk about, put it in the comments because, you know, I just like to chit chat. So let me know what is on your mind tonight. Um, it was funny because before I hopped on the podcast, too, the last thing that was on the TV before it clicked off was a commercial for Rally House. I don't know if that's just a store here or if it's nationwide but it's like a sports um like sports and memorabilia store so you can get your team's shirts and you know like basically they sell everything they have barbecue tools you know like oven mitts whatever with with the teams on them um and so it was a commercial for that so i was like running around going rally house because it was stuck in my head 
and they were talking about earworms on the, the radio show that I listen to every morning. And they actually had a song that someone created that is designed to remove an earworm. So if you have a song stuck in your head, this song was designed to make it stop. And I thought that was interesting. It's a bunch of little clips of things. One thing that I picked up was the beginning of the Simpsons theme song is in it. And I'm like, well, great. I'm going to have the Simpsons stuck in my head. But um, supposedly it works. I didn't have an earworm at the time when I heard it. But what is a song that you get stuck in your head that just drives you crazy? Put it in the comments. Please share. The comments are over here for me. They're probably down here for you. So feel free to put it in the comments. And speaking of comments, Kyler says, this week felt like a mix between taking too long and not long enough. That happens too. Like parts of it can drag out and then other parts will speed by. Hey, Aaron's here. Send in love, buddy. I'm working hard. Send in love to you too. And Lizzie, awesome. Thanks for hopping in here. That is awesome. Um, trying to think of another song that I get stuck in my head. Like I seem to wake up every morning with a song in my head and I kind of wonder what I'm dreaming about because the songs vary. They can be like, anything from something hard rock to like commercials to the other morning I woke up. Oh, what was this song? Oh, it was like a, an old freestyle song. That song. Cause you're bad of the heart. It was like stuck in my head. I'm like, where the hell did that come from? I haven't thought about that song in ages, but it was in there. So that was driving me nuts. I wish I had that earworm eraser song for that, <laughs> but there's so many like commercials there was the, um, well, <clears throat> excuse me, like the, is it Billy Bass, the fish that was singing the filet of fish song? That would get stuck in my head before. I'm trying to think of something else. Now that I'm trying to think of it, my, my brain's like, no, no songs for you. But uh, <laughs> I'll go around singing all kinds of crazy stuff. Hey, there's Jesse Frankenstein, the song Frankenstein by, is it Edgar Winter? He has that song. <laughs> Fucking making Christmas metal cover by Rise Against. I don't know that. I'm going to have to check that out. Crystal's here. Hey, Crystal. Thanks for hopping on. That is awesome to see you tonight. I think I have a repressed childhood trauma and that must have been playing. Oh, Frankenstein. Okay. <laughs> and Crystal's confirming, yes, he whistles it all day. So, oh, I'm sorry. That's the reason why. That's sucky. Yeah, that's true, though. Like, songs connect us to all kinds of things in our lives. And I have music playing all the time. I listen to everything from musicals to rock to alternative to metal to, like, I run the gamut. My liked songs are crazy. They're just like all over the place. Um, so I never know what is going to be popping into my head and what it's going to remind me of because there's so, just so many life experiences you don't even realize are still in your brain until you hear something that pops it back out like that. So um, I'm sorry that it was a negative reason why that's stuck in your head. But if you guys have... You know, we're talking earworms. If we're talking like songs that connect you to memories, put them in, put them in the comments and let me know what the connection is, because I find that really interesting. Um, so let's see here. Uh, Jesse can't stay too long. Wanted to hop in for a few, though. I'm really glad he did. I love that you guys come over here on Thursdays. Thank you. I really, really appreciate it because I love you guys and you're awesome. And Crystal says, I got the medication commercial for Antivio stuff. Yeah, the song stuck. Is that, that's not, no, that's active. Yeah, that's not Antivio. <laughs> See, now I don't even know what the song is. Because then there's the Jardians commercial. That song will get stuck in your head, too. And there was, oh, man. There was a dog medicine commercial. Was that Celestro with the dog on Celestro, Celestro? I'm going to have to look these up 
because I have too many, too many wires crossing. I can't remember how the songs go. Three times. And Tibio and Tibio and Tibio. I think I know what you're talking about, but I can't bring the tune out. I'm going to wake up at three o'clock in the morning singing this crystal. That's what's going to happen. Oh, I love you guys. You're awesome. Thank you. And Johnny says, love and respect to everyone here. You are all genuinely awesome. And my life is richer because of you all. hundred percent. I am echoing that. Like I said, um, you know, like Jesse say, so glad we met this little community. Me too. It's like I said in, uh, the Saturday night podcast, the goddamn program, you guys are the family I didn't know I needed. And I'm just so happy to be in this community with you guys. It is so fun. And you're all so awesome. And just, I look forward to our podcast meetings. Sorry, I got to sit different. Oh, man, I just, you ever wake up and you're like, God, I feel old. Like <laughs> all of a sudden everything hurts, man. Monday, I, um, uh, was out back and I went to jump in the pool and the dog was in the pool. So I like went kind of cockeyed and apparently in my head, I was a Marvel superhero because the way I landed was like how the superheroes land. Only my knee hit the concrete bottom of the pool and it just jarred everything. Like, like my forehead hurts. Like every, I was like, who does that? Who does that happen to? Old ladies. That's who. Oh, Crystal says there's countless podcasts and personalities out there, but oh my God, we just love this one. I love you guys. Thank you. It's so fun. It's just fun to talk to you guys. And that's why like, I don't over plan the Thursday night one at all. I just want to see where we go because we wind up talking about like last week, it was Halloween and candy and costumes and traditions and you know, it, it always just flows naturally because I feel like I'm just hanging out with my friends because I am, because I love you guys. Darren is here. Hey, my friend. Oh my gosh. I can't tell everybody how long we've known each other because then they really will think that we're old. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, Jesse says, every day now, I just realized how gray my beard is starting to get. Right? Like you can tell my, my grays are coming in. I, I'm not there yet. I have friends who are, are embracing their gray and I bless them for it. I'm like, I'm so happy that you're there. I'm not there yet. I think I am. But then when this gets about this long, I'm like, nope. Nope. It's starting to look like a swamp hag. Time to die. So it's all good. It just makes my six head look like an eight head because it makes my, my scalp look even bigger. <laughs> Oh, and that just brought back a memory I haven't thought of in years, too. I have a nephew. He's 23 now. And when he was little, he used to call his scalp his scallop. So when I said scalp, I just heard his little voice in my head talking about his scallop. <laughs> Crystal said, oh, my God, today at work, my boss told me her niece was visiting the grandma with her kids. Niece went in the house one minute. And then at that moment, the one-year-old fell in the pool. Grandma screamed. Oh, there's going to be more to this story. That's I hope the one-year-old's okay. The mom runs out and dives in to save the baby and breaks her fucking leg. Oh, my God. That's horrible. I can see, like, reacting, though, and just going after your child and not considering how you were going to land. Like, that completely makes sense to me. Oh, Darren has the Michael McDonald gray beard. <laughs> I've got such a long way to go. <laughs> Michael McDonald, man. Is he still around? He's like Mr. Yacht Rock. That's so funny. I'm trying to think of what he had um, his own song. Because every time I think about him, I picture him singing with somebody else. Like Ride with the Wind, he did background. And he did... Um, was it on my own? Is that Michael McDonald? I just, oh, I just cracked a brain cell remembering that one. It was him and a woman. I feel like it was Patti LaBelle or somebody like that. Wow. I'm going way, way back in the memory bank here. 
I can't remember what he sang by himself. Okay, so Darren is confirming, I'm guessing the on my own, uh, that it was Patti LaBelle. She's local to my area. She's a Philly girl. Oh, and Johnny says, I had Ann make me an old Van Halen patch today. Cool. So for those of you who don't know my friend Johnny, you can see in his profile picture, he has vests with lots of patches that his wife makes, and they're super duper cool. So Ann is his wife. She is awesome. Please tell her that I said hello. And Crystal says, went to first hospital and gave her pain meds, sent her home, but still hurt. So went to second hospital and they're like, oh my God, it's destroyed. She's still hobbling on it. Just being old reminded me. That's okay. That's horrible that the first hospital couldn't recognize a severely broken leg. Like to me, that should be hospital 101. Like, why do you have x-ray machines? You know, like, I d that's a whole other conversation, the healthcare in this country. And I do know that we have it a lot better than a lot of places in this world, but we don't have it as good as we should have it because stuff like that should never, ever happen. That's horrible. She said, it's South Carolina. So, or as our friend Beast calls it, South Kakalaki. <laughs> Is that what he calls it? <laughs> oh, yay. Anne heard me and said hello. Thank you. And Darren says, I keep forgetting the song McDonald sang. Did he have a farm? No, I know you're talking about Michael McDonald. <laughs> I bet if we put Yacht Rock on, we'd hear like five of them in the first 20 minutes. Uh, let's see here. What's another song that takes me back? Well, when I see Darren, I think of Prince because Darren is probably the biggest Prince fan that I've ever met in my entire life. Um, <laughs> Crystal's confirming that it's South Kakalaki. <laughs> I like that. Um, but if you had like somebody ask, you know, well, what, what music reminds you of me? What do you think they would say? Like, is there a band that you listen to all the time? Um, cause like my youngest MCR would immediately be when I think of her, I think of my chemical romance and, um, it came up in my Facebook memories today that two years ago today, I took her to the first MCR concert we went to that year and they were really good. Um, And Jesse says, I can't believe how much different social services, treatment of animals and health care healthcare are in the South. I know a little bit about that um, only because I went to college in Kentucky. And when um, you got sick, like there was, it was Pineville, but was it uh, crap? What county were we in? I feel like we were in Knox County, but the county hospital like was known for people dying in the waiting room. Like it was really, 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 really bad. So it was kind of like, just put me out in front of the dorm room and let me die. <laughs> Cause it's, you know, that's what's going to happen at the hospital. And it's horrible. It is absolutely horrible. And I can't believe that, you know, this has now been, holy shit, it's been 30 years. Oh, oh God, that hurt a little bit since I've been, since I was in college. <gasps> um, and it's still that way. So I'm sorry to hear that. That's horrible. <laughs> Crystal says, I see a pole shadow. Put on Yacht Rock and Slow Jam on it. I would if I didn't hurt myself jumping in the pool. <laughs> oh, yes, Fugazi. Okay, I have a Fugazi story too. You guys remind me of so many stories. I love it. When I was in high school, um, it was near Princeton, and there was a, a square, Palmer Square, I think it was called, just popped into my head. Again, memories like cells that have not been accessed in years. But there were posters hanging all over Princeton that Fugazi was going to be playing. So we all went to Palmer Square, and we're waiting and we're waiting and we're waiting and somebody just put up the signs being an asshole like there was no Fugazi show but a bunch of us showed up for it and we're all just sitting around 
and it turned into the biggest game of Duck, Duck, Goose I've ever played in my life because we all got bored waiting and decided to just sit in a big circle and play Duck, Duck, Goose in the square because there was no Fugazi show. <laughs> so when I see Fugazi, that's what I used to think about. But now I will think about you because that is so fun. I love doing stupid fun stuff like that. And it passed the time. So that was awesome. All right, there's more of you in there. What band represents you? Like that somebody would say, you know, when they hear it, oh, that reminds me of, you know, and Crystal saying, start a wave. We've done that too. We've done, I'm trying to think of all the kinds of silly stuff like that we've done because we'll start, you know, like when you get bored, but you don't want to do anything that'll land you in jail. You just want to be silly. That's another good idea. Or we've started like sing-alongs and man, I can't think right now of something else. But if you've done something silly, like starting a wave with strangers or playing Duck, Duck, Goose with strangers, put that in the comments too, because that's fun. Oh, and Crystal says we. So again, you guys are just like, my brain cells are going to need a nap after this. I have a friend that used to tour with Ween. Um, I'm not sure exactly what he did as far as like his job with the band, but he toured with them all over the place. And even with that thin connection, like we went to high school together, but like, and then he dated a friend. So like years later, so we kind of like hung out again. Um, but that's like, even with that, I only know Ocean Man <laughs> by Ween. So you're inspiring me to listen to more Ween because if what your husband says is correct, you have a lot of Ween tattoos. I am very interested in learning more Ween songs. Okay, Johnny just commented, I wasn't sure if I was allowed to say anything. That's why I didn't say anything. So he said, uh, we're going to Tromaville in seven days. I can't wait. So I... My friend and Johnny and I, Johnny's also my friend, but my friend who you guys don't know yet, uh, and Johnny and I are going to be going up to New York next week to film for a trauma movie that Johnny's already in, but um, my other friend and I are also going to be in it, and I'm super psyched. It's going to be so fun. I can't wait. So uh, that's going to be awesome. I'm getting my outfit together for that because we're, we're going to be can I say what we're going to be? I don't want to ruin any surprises. That's why I didn't say it because I didn't know what I was allowed to say. But I'll wait for the comments to see what I'm allowed to share. But Darren says, Prince Michael Jackson, Darren dance grooves. I would hear that all the time. Yes, I can see that. Those are definitely songs that I can associate with you for sure. And Crystal says, Shinola Volume 2 is awesome. So I will definitely check that out. Thank you. I don't know that I have a band or a singer that reminds people of me. Like if there's something, if there is somebody, let me know. Um, Cause I don't know off the top of the, uh, off the top of my head of a band. I listen, I like, I love Linkin Park. Like, and when we do karaoke, I do a lot of Linkin Park. I think cause I can sing in Chester's range, you know, not the screaming so much, but the singing, because I sing all the time. I'm not a good singer. I just enjoy singing. So if I'm in my car, if I'm cleaning the house, I do all the singing. Um, and I do like enjoy karaoke, but that's usually after I've had a few. Um, and then I'm more confident <laughs> to get up and sing in front of people. But my daughter and I, the one that I said I associate MCR with her. Um, she and I do a lot of the karaoke together because we can harmonize, and that's a lot of fun. I like having that experience with her. So that's cool. My other two don't really do karaoke as much. Um, although my older daughter did do Take On Me with her girlfriend, and that was awesome. I was so, like, entertained. <laughs> so... Oh, Darren has to go to work. Have a good night. Thank you. Kisses to you too. And thank you so much for hopping on here. Hopefully you'll join us on Thursdays now. It's so great to see you. Um, yeah, it's funny how many friends I have that work overnights too. 
<laughs> I'm learning. There's a lot of vampires out there. So that's cool. Maybe that's the song that reminds people of me because I love the Lost Boys. Maybe like Cry Little Sister. I don't know. What else were we talking about? We were talking about Michael McDonald there for a hot minute <laughs> and Yacht Rock <laughs> and Fugazi. Aaliyah's joining us. Hey, beautiful. Thank you so much for hopping on here too. Yay. Awesome. So Aaliyah, the questions on the table are what songs do you get as an earworm? What's a band or group that somebody would say reminds them of you. Like, is there something that you listen to all the time? And what was the other one that we were talking about? Oh, like, have you ever just started a random game of like duck, duck, goose or something with strangers? I think that's all you missed. I just wanted to catch you up. So, um, yeah, like what, what song or group do you think people think of you? So this says STV. I don't know what that is. Is that a band? Am I out of the loop? I feel like I'm out of the loop. STV. SRV. Okay. I have a feeling your phone's being silly. So when you get it out, I can't wait to see what that is. Oh, 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 duh. I'm an idiot. Stevie Ray Vaughan. Okay, awesome. Gotcha. <laughs> I was I was not getting the abbreviation. I apologize. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, and Johnny says that today would have been Michael Jackson's birthday. I did not realize that. Let's see here. And he also says, I would hope my own music would be what people associate with me. Absolutely. If you're not already following my friend Johnny, go over and check out all of his different pages for his music, for his movies, for all of his projects. Like he's a very, very busy man, always working on stuff. Oh, Jesse says, she's the night owl. I'm out so early sometimes. I'm not a fan of the pop-up dancing back in the day. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Like the, um, what did they call that? It was a mob, Dan flesh mob, dance mob, something mob. It had, it had a name. Um, let's, what was it called? I think it was a flash mob. Oh, Ali is asking for a link. Johnny, I think you guys are both on Facebook. I don't know if you're both on the same Facebook page, but if you want to put your link, um, in the comments, because I don't think I still have, oh wait, here it is. There's Johnny's link, link to Frozen Dead 13. That'll get you to all of his stuff. Um, all of his socials and his merch and all the things. And so I should probably also put my link up there too. <laughs> Learnedingogo.com is my website. Um, I also have a link tree, but it's just Sydney A. So that'll get you, you know, to all my things, to my book, to the podcast, which you already found, to my socials, which you already found. So, um, but if you want to share that out, I would really appreciate it. Thank you. So Crystal says, would you rather cheat on your spouse or have your spouse cheat on you? Neither obviously, but for fun. Yeah. I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I, you know, like either way, I couldn't handle it. So, you know, like I talk about that. I think I talk about it in the book actually too, how what I do is if I'm going to do something and the thought of Dave doing it upsets me, I won't do it because like that to me means that there's a line that's been crossed. So that's how I know, like, you know, nope, nope. And like the thought of him straight, like it just, oh, nope, that would break my heart. So I think that's, you know, there's, there's like, you know, in the past when I was younger and stuff like that, like it, there wasn't that big of an attachment. So it didn't seem like, you know, 
as big of a deal to be like, oh, I'm, I'm done, you know, or like whatever, if something happened, you get more mad. But now I don't think I'd be mad. I think I'd be destroyed, you know, if something happened like that. But uh, yeah. Oh, now I'm like, I can't even picture it. To me, there's just no orgasm in the world that's worth it. <laughs> You know, like I have such a great marriage that there's not, I would never. So, but if you want to put your answers in the comments, I didn't mean to just totally, <laughs> that. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, and Crystal says, I know, right? It's impossible. How horrible is that question? LOL. I live by, if I wouldn't say it or do it in front of him, then don't do it. Exactly. And every relationship has its own set of rules. You know, there's to, other, to other people, there's things that, you know, are like, yeah, that's fine. You know, or like, if you have an open marriage, if you have, you know, like, whatever, whatever works for you. But for me personally, like, I would just be destroyed. Paul, <laughs> hey, Paul, what did I walk into? Oh, you, you are tardy to the party, sir. You, <laughs> you have missed. All right. For everybody that's just hopping in, I'm just going to do the quick rundown again. We've been discussing earworms. We've been discussing Michael McDonald and Yacht Rock. We've been discussing what band do people associate with you? So if it was like, okay, we have we have a mutual friend, Stephen, who is the punniest man on earth. I don't know how he keeps all of the puns in his head because everything he posts is punny. But he's the biggest U2 fan that... I've ever known. So like, if I hear you too, I think of Steven. Oh, Paul says rush. All right. See, I didn't know that about you. Yep. Exactly. That's exactly. Feldman is who I'm talking about. Um, and now we're talking about, would you rather cheat on your spouse or have your spouse cheat on you? To which I, I said, nope, 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 nope. Oh yeah. We were talking about flash mobs too. <laughs> so Jesse says, my late teens and early 20s relationships were horrible. It's so nice being in a comfortable, healthy relationship. Amen to that, sir. I'm going to drink to that because I've, I've had my share of not healthy relationships. So I am so grateful, so grateful to be with my husband. Oh, and Crystal said, we both die. It's a sickening thought. I'm sorry. No, hey, it was a good, good conversation starter because... It's one of those, you know, that, like I said, everybody has different rules and everybody has different emotional attachments in their relationships. So it's interesting to see um, what other people think about that too. <laughs> Flash mobs. Sorry, hated those. I've never seen a musical that I liked. Okay. So I, the flash mob thing was like interesting at first. And then, I'm sorry, I saw what Crystal commented <laughs> before. I'll get to that in one second. Um, and as somebody who is a musical fan, I was in the musicals in school. I love musicals. I will break into song at any point as if I am living in a musical. Um, but I get that they're not everyone's cup of tea. But the flash mobs after a while seemed kind of corny. Like, at first it was like, how do you pull that off? That's a lot to pull off. And then it was like, oh, it's another flash mob. Like everything else that's a trend after a little bit, they kind of don't end when they should. And they kind of keep going. So let's see. And Johnny says, did, did you hear why Bono was late for his concert? No, I feel like this is a joke. So I'm waiting to hear the punchline. Why was Bono late for his concert? Johnny, where'd you go? <laughs> Answer your question. <laughs> oh, because he still hadn't found it. He still hasn't found what he's looking for on a street with no name. All right, sir. <laughs> okay, so... So, Crystal, I do not do the over 18 um, claim in the beginning, but we'll see what YouTube does to me. So, Crystal's question is, <laughs> would you rather have someone put lipstick on your butthole with their lips or put the lipstick on the person? <laughs> That's hilarious. 
I say go for the lips. If you're going to do it, commit. If not, you're just making a butt puppet. So, you know, make it an experience. That's just my, uh, <laughs> my two cents. Oh, hey, my sister's here too. <laughs> said I was typing getting no answers. Where were you typing, Sissy? Because I I didn't see any of your, your questions here. Yeah, I'm going back through the comments. I don't see it, sweetie. But welcome. Thank you for hopping on. And Paul says, everyone has different boundaries. As long as you stay within the boundaries of your relationship, I think you're good. Exactly. Because some people have very, very strict and some people have very, very open, and most of us are somewhere in between. So I think that's a very good point. And Crystal says, heavy metal is a good musical. Is that like the movie, heavy metal? Or is there another one? Because I know of Rock of Ages, but I don't know of a stage show that's heavy metal, but maybe I'm just not aware. Um, <laughs> Oh, she says I was in the wrong chat. Well, welcome to the right chat, sissy. We're happy that you're here. Uh, my sister, if you were on last week, taught us about smoking Smarties. So <laughs> that's so funny. So uh, let's see. Let's try again. Hey, sissy, what made us feel sick in relationships? That wasn't the question, but that's that's a very good uh, good thing to take from what we were talking about. Um, yeah. And Johnny says complete trust in a relationship is a wonderful thing. 110%. Absolutely. Yes. Um, but back to my sister. No, we weren't specifically talking about what makes us feel sick in relationships. I don't know if that was in response to the cheating question or the lipstick on the butthole question, but feel free to answer both. <laughs> Okay, yes, the cartoon movie from the 80s. That is what I thought you were talking about. I just wanted to make sure um, that I was I had the right heavy metal in my head. I have not seen that in forever. I need to add that to the list, my ever-growing list of things that you guys are giving me to watch. I think I might have to live eight lifetimes to watch them all, but I'm so excited to like check out all this stuff. Right now, my, my homework is uh, Class of Newcomb High because I have not seen that yet. But that is the next thing that I is my uh, homework to watch. So I'm going to be watching that one next. And then what else was on the list? Um, poop. I, I actually have post-it notes out on my desk because I have to write things down or I don't remember them. Um, so it's out on my, my post-it note. I played trivia on Tuesday with my work coworkers. We all work um, virtually. And so we, we were playing trivia and it was like rom-coms was the um, category. And at first I was kicking ass because there was an entire series of Princess Bride questions in a row and I was getting all of them. But then they were like, um, it was almost like The Notebook. I'm like, I haven't seen it. And one was like Silver Linings Playbook. playbook. I'm like, haven't seen it. They're like, that is it. I am making you a task in Asana, you know, like the work thing that you have to watch this movie. So I'm like, okay, I'm writing them down. <laughs> so uh, Crystal says, you've seen Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, right? Yes, it's been many years, but I have seen that movie. Um, yeah, I just like, I don't really sit down during the day and watch movies. And then like at night, if we're watching something, it's usually superhero, horror, um, you know, like stuff like that. So I need to play catch up on some movies that everyone else has seen that I haven't seen. Um, so I need to do that before I watch something I've already seen. But I always go back to like, like I've seen Dr. Jekyll twice now just because I love, love, love that yizzard. Um, but there's other things that it seems like everybody's seen and I haven't yet. Like we were talking about Alien and Aliens and the entire franchise. I've never seen any of those. Um, so that's on my list too. Okay. So my sister said, Oh, if they cheated, I will say this in a nice clean way with emojis. I would cut off his eggplant, <laughs> put it in a jar and pickle it. Then put on a rom-com sit and eat eggplant while crying. You would eat it. Okay. I know you like pickles, but that's taking it too far. 
<laughs> and Jesse said, my sisters loves Princess Bride. Crystal hasn't seen it. I recommend it. I recommend it. It's a great movie. Um, and it's a classic. So then you'll, you know, you'll get the little sayings that, you know, a lot of people quote all the time, you know, the inconceivable and as you wish, you know, like there's a lot of just um, phrases that people say that are from that movie. So then I think you'd appreciate that. I love the dark crystal. Yes, I have seen the dark crystal. I saw it when it first came out and then maybe five years ago, they played it in the movie theater and it was a double feature with Fraggle Rock and like my whole family went and saw it and they had a lot of behind the scenes stuff about the puppetry and all before the, the movie started. And it was really cool. Like I really enjoyed seeing how they made all of the, the puppets work and everything. And it, oh, such a great movie, such a great movie. Friend, hmm? yeah. And it's funny, my, my one friend who's hopped on here before, he's, he's not on here, um, Steve, he was actually my guest in episode one of this season of this podcast. He and I always talk about the essence. <laughs> you know, it's like he's drinking the Gelfling juice. I think we said that about uh, Keith Richards. He drinks the Gelfling juice and that's why he hasn't died yet. Um, oh, yay, Lunar Projects. Hey, sweetie. She's watching a Rings of Power episode. Sorry, I'm coming in late. Nope, no sorries. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. I'd rather late than never. So I'm so glad you're hopping on here. Crystal says, I used to be all into movies, but now I just, I can't just sit and watch a movie. The TV is kind of just background noise. I understand that. Oh, and they named their cat Olga with her eyeball. <laughs> That's so awesome. And yeah, she says, oh my God, Fraggle Rock. It was so cool seeing Fraggle Rock on the big screen. It was like really fun. Um, but yeah, I like that they're doing that, that they're bringing back the classics on the big screen because, you know, like I didn't get to go to the movie theater a lot when I was a little kid. So, you know, once VCRs came out, that was fantastic. I got to see a lot more movies than I ever would have, you know, if it was always going to the theater. So now getting to see some of those classic ones on the big screen is fantastic. Like I'm really enjoying reliving my childhood that way. Luna Project says, my new kitten is Freya. Oh, your new kitten is so cute, too. I've seen the pictures you were posting. Adorable. If it's the kitty I'm thinking of. I think so. That's super duper cute. You guys all have, like, cool pets. And I love my puppies. I'm always posting them, too. So I'm surprised that they're not waiting outside the door. They usually try to get in here, and I would absolutely let them in here, but they like to go in and out separately and continuously. So it would be a mess, but, um, they, uh, oh, uh, Luna project says that she needs to post new. She's little and gray. Yes. Yes. I am always happy to see pets in my newsfeed. I will never, ever, ever get upset about seeing an animal in my newsfeed, you know, except the people that post like the abused animals that makes me upset. But like, if you're showing off your pets, I am all for it. There is nothing that brightens up my day more than adorable pets in my newsfeed. So that is awesome. And it's almost to the time of the year when I have to decide what my pets are going to dress up as for Halloween because I'm that kind of pet mom. And unfortunately this year, Stanton Amadeus Fluffernutter is no longer with us. So he had more costumes than the other two combined. Um, Oh, Jesse said, I'm getting sleepy and still have a few more things to do tonight. It's been fun. Good night. Good night. Thank you so much for hopping on. It's so good to see you. And I will see you Saturday. I hope. As far as I know, everything's, you know, business as usual for Saturday. And I have not confirmed since I first uh, made the appointment. Appointment is the wrong word, but since I first booked, there we go. Um, but I'm pretty sure I'm doing a podcast with Reaper tomorrow night. So stay tuned for that too, because I will definitely be posting the information if that is still a go, because that'll be a lot of fun too. And that'll be a Thursday, Friday, Saturday with y'all. That's awesome. Like a long weekend. Luna says, Mushu was grooming Freya. I've got her a collar, but she can't fit into it for Halloween. Aw. 
like a Halloween uh, collar because that's super cute. Good night, Crystal. I didn't know if you were going to bed with Jesse or staying up too. So I will see you soon. Thank you so much for hopping on. I love you guys. That is awesome. And Crystal said that would be sweet putting the collar on her. That would be sweet. And I'm trying to think. I'm not buying um, Lexi and Muffy new costumes this year. So we have to choose from. Um, there's a little witch witch hat. There's Supergirl. There's the doctor because it's a lab coat because they're labs. Get it. Um, there's. What else did Muffy have? I bought Muffy something else. Man, I can't even remember. I actually gave all of Stan's costumes away. He had so many of them, and he was just the cutest guinea pig ever. He was awesome. Uh, my sister says, I saw the cutest costumes for cats in Walmart the other day. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, like cats I don't see being as excited about dressing up um, as uh as dogs not that they are yes you guys are right you remember the gypsy skirt that i got for muffy um that she hates she will wiggle her butt until i put the skirt on her and then she just completely stops she wants nothing to do with it pain in the butt <laughs> she's so cute though oh wait there was the chef remember lexi was the chef and muffy was the chocolate mousse she had the moose ears or the moose um antlers there's those too they're still in the box they were cute they were so cute and they both like to wear the the moose antlers because i would put them on and they knew they'd get a treat so then the other one would come over wanting a turn because they knew they'd get a treat if they let me uh dress them up can lexi fit into the skirt she can because it's like a it's almost like a shawl that you tie so it's not um you know it's it's like me, you, and Lexi could get into it probably. Like it's a big, you know, it's made for humans, but it's like a whole lot of fabric. So she could absolutely get into it. She'd be so pissed though. She's so funny because if you put a shirt or a harness on this dog, all of a sudden she doesn't think she can sit down. She just stands there like a pointer dog. Like she just thinks she's trapped. And I'm like, sweetie, you can move. It's okay. It's just a t-shirt. But she's just like, nope, I am now completely wrapped up in a straight jacket and I can't move. She cracks me up. I don't know why she thinks that. But then if you get some food and you tell her she's got to sit down to get the food, all of a sudden she can sit down just fine. So she's a faker. But I have like, um, I have stuff for other holidays for them too. Like I have bunny ears and I have like a little green set of ponytails with a little leprechaun hat. <laughs> I have way too many things for my pets. Oh, Sissy's asking if Muffy's feeling better. Yes. Yes, she is feeling better. I think she froze up from rawhide because my dogs don't get rawhide very often. And this is why, because Muffy cracks out on it. And she just like, I think she just ate too much too fast. And it just didn't agree with her. Um, But she is better now. Thank you for asking. And Luna Project says, you have reindeer horns, right? Yes, I have the moose antlers, and I do actually have reindeer antlers, too. And I think I have um, an elf, like an elf ears and a hat that was for people. But there's no, re there's no law that says I can't put that on my dog, right? I put whatever I want on my dog as long as it's not hurting them. Aaliyah says hot spots, too. Yeah, when they get them, that's... I don't know if um, they've ever had them, but I've heard of that happening to dogs. They get the hot spots. That's sad. Especially, I think, like, bulldogs get them a lot, don't they? Because they have a lot of medical issues. I always wanted a bulldog, but you can't electric fence train a bulldog. And that's, you know, both of my dogs are very well-behaved and get to run around both our yard and the neighbor's yard because we have the fence go around both. Um and so they like have full reign of both yards and I didn't want to have to not be able to do that. Um, 
but I grew up with them. My grandparents had bulldogs and I love them so much. So I just need to make a friend with a bulldog and then I can just like borrow it and love on it and then give it back. <laughs> so Luna Project says she wants an English one too. Oh, uh, do rawhides cause hot spots? Because Aaliyah says rawhides. I know um, that like they're not supposed to be good for dogs. You know, when we had Maya, who's the yellow lab that we had before um, Lexi, she took a rawhide and she tried to bury it in the house and like just tore up her entire face. So after that, we never really, you know, and that was a digging thing. That wasn't the rawhide's fault. Um, but I think that they can have, yeah, like Luna said, digestive issues. And Aaliyah says allergies. So yeah, it's it's just a very, very, very seldom treat because they love it. They love it. And I know people who give their dogs rawhide all the time and it's fine. Um, but both of my girls have a lot of allergies. So we have to watch what we give them. And yeah, you know, like they, what was it? The beef. They can't have beef. Do you know how many like dog treats have beef in them? or beef flavoring, it's it's hard to, you know, like everything's chicken. But then they were saying that a lot of dogs are allergic to chicken. So I don't know. Just try to keep them on the right track, you know, and make sure that they're healthy. And sometimes like they get baby carrots for treats because they get so many treats and they're both fat. So they need like healthy treats. <laughs> so they get vegetables and they love them. So there's no reason why they can't have veggies, you know. That's, oh, and that's what Aaliyah said. Aaliyah said veggies too. And Luna said, yeah, my dad doesn't do rawhide for Buckley. Oh, what kind of dog is Buckley? I want to see Buckley. So, uh, yeah, if there's a carrots are good, Luna says, yes. And they also, with their dinners, because like I said, they, they like their food. Um, we've cut back on the amount of like dog food and they get green beans with their dinner because they love green beans. And I do a whole song about bean juice, you know, they like come running for their bean juice and their beans. They know the song. So as I mentioned earlier, my life is like living in a musical. I just bust out singing all the time about everything. Um, but, uh, oh, okay. Luna Projects is going to show me Buckley. I can't wait. He's a mixed breed. They're so cute too. Mixed breed dogs are so sweet. And especially when it's like a mix and it's kind of like, hmm, should have probably had the dominant gene, the other one. Like, have you seen Chihuahuas? They're like Chihuahuas and Wiener dogs mixed. And either they're really, really cute or they're like kind of like a science experiment gone wrong, depending on what head is on what body. <laughs> it's kind of like a Franken dog. But they're cute and they're little chewinis. I just like saying chewini. But some of the mixes, like, you're just like, sweetie, what? There was a dog at the summer camp that I worked at where I used to go as a camper as well. And his name was Harley. I just remembered it. And he had kind of almost like a lab body, but he had little short legs. And he had almost like a German shepherd shaped head but with gigantic ears and he was all black. He looked like a bat running around the camp all the time. And it was kind of like, buddy, what, you know, like his little parts all got mixed up. And he was so cute because he tried to keep up with the other dogs and he just had these little legs that didn't go with his big body. I'm like, buddy, he was a nice dog. There was a couple dogs, like the camp dogs that were about Rebecca. Hey, sweetie, how you doing tonight? Thanks for hopping on here. Um, Lily is saying no about Harley Poor dog. Yeah. He was just kind of like mismatched parts, but he was a sweetheart and that's the most important thing. And, uh, he used to like follow us all around camp, probably looking for food, but he was a cutie pie. The, the like pine barrens dogs that would just wander around and they were really cute. I was like, that's my dream is to win a big enough lottery that I can get a giant plot of land and just adopt senior dogs, you know, all the ones in the shelter that nobody wants to adopt because they're too old and have enough money to care for them 
and make sure that they're comfy and living their best life in their last years, you know, because there's just so many, you know, especially older dogs that need homes. So that is my dream to one day be able to do that because I would be so happy just surrounded by puppers. There was a meme I saw that was like a couple little senior dogs and it said, have a heart, adopt an old fart. <laughs> I'm like, that's so cute, little old fart dogs. And now that my Lexi girl's 12, she's an old fart. She's a crotchy old fart, man. She is such a grumpy granny now. And it's so funny because she was never like that. And now she's just like, I think when you're born, you're given like a certain amount of fucks and she's just run out. She gives no fucks. She's like, go fish. You're not getting them from me. It's I have none. So <laughs> dealing with this new era of her life has been interesting, but she's my baby. She's my angel baby. She's a good girl. And Muffy's such, Muffy is super duper smart. And we've had two vets and two trainers tell us that she should be a service dog because she's like, meant, you know, like she, she would be an outstanding service dog. But I just don't have time to train her with everything else going on. But she's such a good girl. And she's, you know, she's a little crackhead, but she's the puppy. And she's the baby and she runs the house and she knows it. So <laughs> they're my girls. I don't know what I would do without pets. I'm just one of those people that I need to have awesome animals as a part of my daily life. So I hope that if you're that type of person too, you have awesome pets and that they bring you joy and love because they're, they're just pure souls, you know? So now I want to go pet my pets. So I think I'm going to wrap this up for tonight. But thank you so, so much, all of you who hopped on here with me tonight. And I'm just going to throw this banner up here for anybody who's catching this later that doesn't know. If you have not yet, please pick up a copy of Everything I Need to Know. I learned in GoGo -Go, how Preacher's Daughter Pole danced her way to finding her true self. You can get it paperback or ebook, and it's at learnedingogo.com. And I love you guys so much. Thank you for taking the time to hang out with me tonight. And I appreciate you so much. This has been so fun. I love our Thursday night hangouts. And I will be on the goddamn program Saturday night. And like I said, I'm 99% sure I'm going to be on Reaper's podcast tomorrow night. I have to confirm that again with him. But check out all of my socials to see what's going on. And remember, no matter what you do in your life, make sure to take it head on. Because when you stick your head in the sand and you think you're hiding from your problems, the rest of the world just sees a big ass. Love you.